load up the sled with as much weight as you can find because the big boys are in the house. It's the super mods, the multi-engine tractors, thousands of horsepower, draw thousands of fans to watch the absolute best of the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League come out and battle for a championship. It was a 2010 season, and the Super Mods put on one heck of a show. Get ready, because we're going to bring you all the best pulls from 2010 right now. Oil Motorsports Hour. Ken Stout and Leslie Mayers here to recap everything that happened in the 2010 season with the super modified tractor category. Of course, the multi-engine tractors are always a fan favorite. They like to come out here because when one's not enough and two might be just right, but three or four is perfect, that's the class. Well, and then you put four motors out there, and the sweet song that those motors sings is completely unbelievable when you're looking at eight to 10,000 horsepower on one machine. 15 different events throughout the 2010 season. Everything got started off in Concord, North Carolina. We're going to pick up the action here at day number one in Henry, Illinois. And of course, Ken Beatty, that machine he calls the funny farmall, the cross between farm tractor and crazy wild wicked machine. You can see four of those big Beatty heavies out front and he's pushing 10,000 horsepower. And at Henry, he would pick up the win and certainly send a message to the rest of the field that he was here for the duration. A tough, tough competitor. And another look at it here as those butterflies slowly open up. But this is a man whose name is synonymous with horsepower going back into the drag racing days. Has been doing this since the 60s, not necessarily pulling, but building big horsepower. Very good at what he does to this day. And his wife still heavily involved in this with him. She is a lot of fun in her own right. But of course, she plays a crucial role in their team as well. And you know, in the 2009 season, it came down to Ken Vinny and this guy, Bill Leishner, who's now sporting the rock star colors for 2010 in his Dirt Slinger machine. Yeah, a multi-time champion, to say the least. You could see a few parts and pieces flying off of that one. Hoses flying off of it, so not necessarily the pull he was looking for here. He goes 313. Point oh three, which is good enough for second place. Ed Boyer in his second year campaigning the Super Stallion. You know, went from the old Aries style motors to these T64 turbines. And you know, you can start to hear them buzz up and whistle. You're talking about thousands of RPMs turning inside those motors to get all those fan blades going to create the horsepower for this machine. And of course, these tractors act completely different. We're talking about the turbines versus the automotive style engines. They drive differently. A lot of times the horsepower might be about the same, but the torque is different. The thrust is different. And then the way that they can apply that power is completely different. Some are a little more drivable. Some are a little more aggressive. And with the turbines especially, it's really all or nothing because you've got to put them on full throttle to get them up to the maximum RPMs to get the horsepower that you need out of them. There's no taking it half throttle out there and just kind of pedaling it out and feeling it on the track. you got to mash it right off the throttle, unlike what Michael Stewart did here in the down and dirty machine. You saw him pedal it out there just a little bit before he poured on all the horsepower. Yeah, a little more drivability, and it looked like he might have killed one there. We saw some aluminum down underneath it. That's probably pieces of a block or an oil pan. Nonetheless, not what he wants there. An expensive pull, and yeah, and you can see there, there's a rod bearing, a main bearing laying down there, and caps laying down there. So they grenaded one big time, and these power plants, some are in the area of twenty to $40,000. When it's just amazing the time and effort, each one of these motors has to be completely gone through before the event starts. So we're talking about four hours of maintenance, and that's if everything's in pristine condition, just general routine maintenance. All right, the first time we would see Sean Swearing in the 2010 season is right here at Henry on day number one, former champion inside of the category and would not run the entire season. 
And you can see definite mechanical problems right off the bat. Wobbly off the starting line. Never really got the motors up to full song. And then, of course, the parts underneath there. Definite steering problem, which, hey, if you don't have steering out front, really kind of at a loss, especially when the front end stayed down like it did here for Sean Swearingen and the Joker. So congrats to Ken Vini, who won it. Henry, day number one. It was his second win on the season. We go to Henry, day number two. This is Don Nelson. And unfortunately, much like Sean Swearingen on day number one, the Texas Bullwhip would have some breakage here. What a pleasing hook that he's got going. And just wham, unloads that front end. When these guys break, it's never a small break either. We're talking about steering issues. If you're blowing parts out the oil pan on the motor, we're talking about a brand new block and a lot of times brand new motors. And of course, when you see lots of fluid on the ground like that, you're thinking somewhere between twenty five and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, another look at it here. The front end comes up and the pull was looking great. You're right. Everything is maxed out right here. Full stress, full load. And when it gives up, it gives up big time. So those guys will have to reach in their wallet to fix the Texas bull whip up. And you can see the frustration on his face. You hate losing and you know it just cost you a ton of money. Now picking up some of the parts and pieces. The guys, of course, will clean up the spill as well. We'll continue on and another look here at the Rockstar Energy Drink Dirt Slinger driven by Bill Leishner. Bill Leishner with another solid season would eventually go on to win the championship, but this here would be his first win on the season at an event. Well, the phenomenal thing here for Bill Leishner is the fact that he won the championship last year. He comes out for the 2010 season with four brand new motors. I mean, who does that? Who decides, you know what, I'm going to get rid of my old power plants that I just kicked everybody's butt with out here, and I'm going to bring four brand new ones. He was able to tune them in and get it right on the track. Another look at day one winner here at Henry, Ken Beanie. Ken Beanie had already picked up two wins out of the first three events. And another solid effort here as he certainly was sending a message. He was chasing a championship big time, would end up third here at Henry on day number two. And of course, it's all about consistency, keeping yourself in that top five. You don't have to win them all, but you've got to be consistent in the points. You really can't have a bad day, especially when you've got a tough group of guys out here like you have with our E3 spark plug super modified tractor category. As we continue on here, as a look at the Bunnage Motorsports entry, takes a licking. And again, the automotive style power plants wind behind the wheel. You can see, of course, these motors mounted in an outboard style. A lot of the pullers will tell you that with the motors mounted this way, they get a lot more horsepower transferred to the rear end than if they were mounted straight in line with each other. So the Bunnage is trying to go for any advantages that they can here with that new chassis that they've got on the tractor. Well, and keep in mind, every one of these power plants has its own torque curve to it. So it wants to send the engine one way or the other, and they're trying to utilize all that energy. Here is the three turbine power plant of Derek Bargy. Way out over the stripe. Of course, was DQ'd here with the Apache. Just couldn't pull it back. You can see the definite look of disappointment there. And that's one of the disadvantages with the turbines. You know, we talk about their drivability because once you get them off the line, there's no way to back them down because if you back out of the throttle, you're going to lose all of your horsepower. So you've got to stay in it no matter what and try to stab the brakes. Now, while they've got great brakes on them out here, sometimes you can't push that brake hard enough to keep what we're looking at, 9,000 horsepower coming from these turbines in a straight line. So really, just really hard for drivability. Lots depends on the driver here. The former tank driver, Tim Howe, and a tractor called the Turbulent Toy. I love that name. 292.62 here, day number two at Henry, Illinois, was good enough for fourth place. Then you can never talk about this category and not talk about LD Nation. If you love personality, well, this guy's loaded up with it. Absolutely. He's still trying to figure out how to rein in the power of those four big Brad Andersons that he's got on the four aces machine. And you can see just can't get it hooked up off the line. And once those rear tires start bouncing that back there, you know, it's just something he's got to fight. You know, he's kind of fought this machine all throughout the season, especially up to this point here in Henry Day 2. He also had another entry, and that was turbine power. And there's a good look at him right there. As a matter of fact, when we come back, we'll go back to Goshen, Indiana. Stay with us. 
This telecast is brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Speedco, truck lube and tires. All right, let's continue on with our 2010 season and review with the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. We now take you to Goshen, Indiana, and we'll start the action off here with John Evans. The tractor called Double Down eventually was good enough for second place out here, so a solid effort out of John Evans. Well, when you talk to all the pullers on the circuit, there's only one place that they say is the toughest to pull. And by far, it's Goshen, Indiana. It's a daytime pull. You can see a little bit of shadow on the track at one end. You've got sunshine on the other end. We've got dry surfaces on top. Very, very tricky surface out here for the pullers. Got to bring your A game. All right, and another look at LD Nation with the four aces. You were talking about him struggling. Unfortunately for him, he wouldn't have a whole lot better effort here with the automotive style power plant and eventually made big changes to this tractor. You actually decided that the way that these motors were mounted actually manipulated the drivability on the tractor and so basically scrapped his original design, which he thought was a pristine design that was going to be something different than everybody else and went to something different a little bit later on in the season. This is Jason Evans and the tractor's called the ultimate toy. A good effort here at Goshen, Indiana ended up fourth on the list with just two turbines here. We've seen the three turbine combination. This is the two combination, but still very effective. And these are a little bit bigger turbines, you know, unlike the T-64s, these are the 53s. You know, we're looking at a little bit more like 3,000 horsepower in each one. And, you know, some of the turbine guys have decided less is more with these turbines. Because we have to go full bore with all our power, we're just going to stick it out there at 6,000 instead of 9,000 horsepower. The last time we showed you Bill Leischer and the Rockstar Dirt Slinger, he was the winner at Henry, Illinois on day number two. He went on to win the next two events, making it three in a row, and then, of course, came here to Goshen, Indiana, after a couple of more events where he had solid efforts, including a second place, but he would pick up yet another win, making it his fourth on the season, and he was chasing a championship once again. Talk about a guy who just gets it dialed in. You saw that flailing fuel line, just like he had at Henry, Illinois, but this time it happens at the very end fuel pouring out down there at the bottom but still a strong solid effort you know just consistent very very consistent just keeps it dialed in and here's a look at takes a lick and one more time Steve Bunnage and this tractor had picked up two wins before they showed up here at Goshen Indiana and the Bunnages were in the heat of the race in the 2009 season and then decided, you know what, we're going to completely overhaul our program here. We're going to go with a brand new chassis. It's made a lot of difference. They're running Vini motors. And, you know, that's what's propelled them to the top of the race here and put them in the mix with Vini and Leishner at the top of the heap to race for that championship. Well, we showed you LD Nation with the four aces, of course, the four automotive style engines. This is LD Nation with the Speedco, Indian Outlaw, and a pair of turbines. He definitely has the turbines down. He knows how to play with these things. And he's one of the pioneers with the turbines. 11 years of experience with the turbines. You know, everybody was surprised last year when he took a year off and just ran the automotive style engines. And then this year came back with the two turbines. Well, as you might imagine, when you're chasing a championship and the competition is as stiff as it is out here, not just in this class, but any class, people are pushing it. Unfortunately, some people push it a little too hard out across the stripe, and when you go out across that white line, you get disqualified. So we had a chance to check in with Big John Mears, one of the officials. I think the last time I ever had three vehicles in one class go out of bounds was Wheeling, Missouri at the Lucas Oil Speedway in 2009. This is going to be a record right here. Tell you what, top a record. I I don't like. Last year. And Big John Mears taking it personally, man. He wants that track to be perfect for these guys, and he hates it when they have a bad pull. Stay with us when we come back. It'll be the Indy Super Bowl. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. All right, welcome to Indianapolis, Indiana, the motorsports capital of the world. Of course, the fair is going on, the state fair, just across the parking lot there. And this is home of the Super Bowl. Larry Roberts, one of the biggest names in the sport, 
field some eight different vehicles and multiple classes. This tractor is called the Double Down. You know, as the first hook out of the afternoon, just a beautiful pass out here. Larry doesn't get the opportunity to sit in the seat very often, but, you know, he definitely brings his A game when he does, and he's going to put up that 297.06. It would be good enough for third for the day, but it would actually lead the class for a long time. That was a good shot of the clutch can, too, that had a lot of heat inside of it. Up next, the Texas Bullwhip. Last time we saw this tractor, he had some problems with a blown engine. They would continue. About halfway through the run or three quarters away, I mean, I knew I lost the engine and I thought it was a blower belt. And when I actually stopped, uh, the engine was still running and the flag man was out looking around and then I was working the throttle and I could tell that one engine, the butterflies, was not moving and then I seen the cable was broken. I thought it had disconnected, but it actually broke. So he's got one motor. Well, the bad news was he had lost the throttle cable, of course. The good news was it wasn't near as devastating as it was the last time he was out, and he grenaded a power plant. But a really cool tractor because it has both the automotive-style engine and, of course, the industrial power plant. Let's go back to LD Nation one more time here with the Speedco Indian Outlaw. And I think something important that we have to remember here with these tractors, too, is that these are pretty light machines for all the horsepower that they're slinging around. We're slinging eight to 10,000 horsepower on a machine weighing a little less than 8,000 pounds. So, you know, it is very turbulent out there, you know, hence the name of the other tractors in the category, like the turbulent toy. Yeah, and one horsepower per pound is a very, very good combination for excitement, I promise you. LD Nation out here trying to get it done as well. And LD Nation with a 291.54 was good enough for fourth place at the Super Bowl. We'll continue on, this time with Jamie Austin and the Predator. You know, most of the time we're seeing heavies inside of the category. This time, Jamie Austin runs the Chevys, you know, right around 500 cubic inches. So he's running a little bit less horsepower. That team kind of plays on that and says that's their advantage at some events and you know it was good enough to earn him fifth place and here it seemed to be in the air i guess we had throttle breakage throttle linkage breakage on the texas bullwhip and the dirt slinger from rockstar pretty much the same exact problem and you saw those butterflies shut down on that right front power plant. You never want to see that. When you do that, you know, you're putting a lot of stress on the other rotors as well. Not only are you taking away horsepower, but you're stressing the whole machine. I know the Dirt Slinger team was really worried after that run and was very careful to go through all the motors to make sure nothing else was broke. Well, we told you that takes a licking. Definitely had a shot going on here. I mean, he was charging hard, staying right there in the thick of things for the points with some wins underneath his belt. And he would add to it here at the Super Bowl, 310.75, a full pull, and was waiting for a pull off. He would eventually pick up the win. And you know, these guys didn't even have time to enjoy their time in winner's circle. You know, they were told that they had made the full pull. They immediately went back to the pits started refueling these machines. You know, you're talking about 20 gallons of fuel per run. So, you know, you got to make sure that you're refueled and ready to go because they knew that the turbulent toy was definitely a contender there and could place itself in the pull off as well. It was the last tractor in the pull. Tim Howe had one shot at it. It was all or nothing. And the turbulent toy came out here, but was a little bit short at 303 even. Steve and Wayne Bunnage, though, were very happy as they picked up their third win on the event. They were chasing down the points leader. But they were going to stop and enjoy this one, and rightfully so. We went there last year, you know, or the year before, and it's like, well, we had, a, we had some breakage there, and we went in there this year thinking, well, we just want to do good. You know, I mean, that's, that's usually what all you want. But, well, when we come out of there and we was like, this is the biggest thing we've ever done, you know. I mean, that, that's huge, CBS and everything. It's like, when the Indy was it. I mean, it was... I mean, especially being on CBS, I mean, you couldn't beat that. I mean, and like they said, I mean, you, you didn't win. We did been pretty bad, really. I mean, we are the only one out the gate compared to everybody else. And the hometown was like thrilled to death when I called them, you know, and, and then Tim Engler, the one that built our chassis, he's like, I was like, I guess it, it, don't, it don't hurt to be on CBS, does it? He goes, oh, no, that's just fine, you know. And being in front of TV that much like that is outstanding. Yeah, it's, it was a big thrill to win big indie super pull like that. Needless to say, those guys were very excited and they would carry that excitement into the next event. Hamburg, New York, it's up next. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Canada. 
your all-natural pet food. All right, Hamburg, New York, day number one, the America's Fair. Up just outside of Niagara Falls, Jamie Austin with a Predator. Eventually went 321.57 feet and makes it into the pull-off. Does a great job driving it off the starting line, about 50 to 75 feet. You can see that front end just barely dangling off the ground as he works those Chevy power plants all the way to the end. Eventually, he'd end up finishing fourth in the pull-up, one of the top finishes for the Austin camp this year. And the former champ in the category, Sean Swearingen, was back with the Joker. Looking to redeem himself. Another wild-looking tractor here, just a beautifully painted machine. Stops short, eventually comes back, and this time lays down a run. You can see everything full song, rocking it out sweet. Lots of torque on the chassis out there. Even went sideways down the track and still put up a distance of 338 and 55. I can't imagine how far he would have gone if he could have just kept it straight. We'll have a look at this one more time. He made the pull off here and then also went on to win in the pull off. But yeah, you're right. I mean, this thing was loaded up. This was championship caliber pulling right here and shows why he was able to win the class previously. And you just fought a lot of mechanical issues all year long. Couldn't make the full season. And you know if he would have, he would have been right in the middle of the race. You can hear the whistle of the turbines. The triple turbines there for Derek Bargy and the Apache. Unfortunately for him, just missed the pull off out here at Hamburg. These guys super strong in this Apache machine and always in that top five categories where they always want to place it. This turbine, you know, it's definitely one to watch for in the 2011 season. On this particular day, a full pull was at the 320 mark. He went 318.14, just a little bit short. Blake Stewart was up next, the down and dirty. This was his inaugural run on the down and dirty machine. Of course, his brother Michael had done a lot of the driving duties. The first time that he gets to rein in all that horsepower, and unfortunately, a little bit of problems here with some breakage and a wild ride for him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he wasn't afraid to stand on the throttle. That's exactly what he did with that right hand. Got it way over there by the sideline, never lifted, and hung on. It was quite a wild ride. The fans were treated to it. Not what he was hoping for, but it was fun to watch. But hey, he's 18 years old. Who else gets to harness that much horsepower and drive one of these bad boys at 18? Wayne Bunnage, of course, fresh off of that win at the Indy Super Bowl. They come out here with takes a licking, still ticking. And again, this one makes the pull off. Ended up second on the event, was just picking away at those points. And there is no doubt that Bill Leishner could feel the pressure. Oh, definitely making Leishner nervous at this point in time in the season. Here's the thing, Bill Leishner, he's had pressure before, but you know, now he's got a lot of big guns coming at him. It, you know, it was just one or two guys, but now he's got about five guys at the top of the heap. It's anybody's ball game at this point in time in the points. And this pull didn't help the pressure out at all. The 320 mark being a full pull, he would miss that as he went 315.31 and had to stand there and watch the pull off and the bunnages do extremely well. And he was watching that points lead dwindle away. Hamburg, New York is usually one of the events where Bill Leishner owns it. Saw him back and staying in seventh place here. You know, he's got issues then. Ken Vini, who was in the championship hunt early on, unfortunately, had broken the chassis on this tractor. You saw that last shot. You could actually see where some of it was not red any longer. This was the first pull since they had made the major repairs on that tractor. He came out 324.84 and made the pull off. Eventually finished up in third. And there's a look at Ken's wife. And you see Rona, she's just excited that it made the way all the way down the track after all that breakage and all the time and effort they put together to get it back together. We'd like to thank Lucas Oil and Rockstar and all the other major sponsors that we've got. And it's uh, been a really good event for her. We fought it all year long and finally got a win. Well, so much for you being kind of a part-timer. Well, we just come out to shake things up a little bit. <laughs> Go party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, we're not finished yet. We still have day two from Hamburg, and we have Wheatland, Missouri. The championship was getting tight. Stay with us. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by MagnaFlow Exhaust Products. 
The first thing you hear, the last thing you see. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour. We are covering the 2010 season for the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League featuring the Super Mod tractors. Here's a look at LD Nation. We told you eventually he relocated the power plants on this particular tractor. There's a look at what he did. A lot more conventional style here as he comes out here with the test puller on day two at Hamburg. Well, and you can see that outboard style now. You lost a fuel line there at the end as it sprayed fuel everywhere down there at the top end of the track. But that outboard style, and what that does is it allows more power to go back into the rear of the tractor so you don't lose it during the transfer. You know, these motors are all tied into a gearbox. So when you have them outboard style like this, you tie the front two together and then into the gearbox, the back two together into the gearbox. The way that he had them super stacked before, we had four different points where they were tied into the gearbox, losing a lot of that horsepower and momentum. Boy, great overhead shot there from the sled, and you can see how far out the gate he was. And that thing's making some steam now as he's starting to get it figured out. Woo, dirt everywhere. Just a shower, just a dirt shower, that's all. All right, here comes LD Nation, and this time it would be with the Speedco Indian Outlaw, the turbine power tractor. And of course, the sled has been reset, so we're not gonna see those giant digits like we did with those 354s, but still a very, very impressive run here for LD Nation, and nothing like coming back to back and getting to run your vehicles as he sticks it out there 299 and 86. And the turbine power tractors just look so much simpler. I mean, you see the four automotive style engines like this, and they get compact. Complex. You start talking about that transfer case and the gearboxes that are in there, and you look at what's going on with these tractors, there's a lot of stuff happening. Wayne Bunnage was in the hunt for the championship, though, right here. He had already had a number of wins on the season and was closing the gap ever so slightly, but very, very consistently on Bill Leisner, and he was looking for another great day here. And you see just a great run here. You see the track's a little bit loose, which affected a lot of the pullers here at Hamburg, New York on day two especially. But a 317 and 94 run, good enough for second place. And like you said, Ken, stay inconsistent. Sean Swearingen, of course, our winner from day number one with the Joker. Again, take a look at the paint on that tractor. Just blows me away. It is wild. But he was on his game when he came out here day number one. Day two, again, no slouch by any means, would end up in third place at 314 and 39. Swearingen came out here, and like he said, he was here to mix things up, and that's exactly what he did. He's the wild card. Had a lot of people waiting in the back, you know, maybe checking their settings and doubts, because a lot of the pullers will stand on that starting line and watch everyone else go. And when you see a guy like Swearingen barrel down through there, you got to second guess your numbers and start making adjustments. As the sun set in upstate New York, it was Derek Bargy with the Apache that would come out here and end up in fifth place. But as you might imagine, you can see him waver by the sideline. As you might imagine, this track changes drastically as that sun is setting. Once the sun starts to go down, you get a little bit more moisture coming up. It gets a little bit tacky. So those guys, when they're talking about making their adjustments, not only do they have to take in, you know, barometric pressure and air temperature and humidity, but they've also got to go out there and read the track as well. And how about it here, Blake Stewart, Second attempt here at Hamburg and puts down a very solid pass. Yeah, ends up fourth, but not near as erratic as pass number one. That was a little calmer, and you can see a high five as well from the officials. Really happy with the young man going out there doing a great job. And then the veteran back behind the wheel again. You know, Ken Beanie, third on day one. Happy the chassis just stayed together after having to, you know, mend it and weld it. And you can see all that silver forward. That's brand new chassis and brand new parts. And hey, Rona, she's chasing it down the end too. Absolutely, and Ken Beanie would get the job done. 328.20, another look at it here. Your winner, and I'll tell you, he did it by more than 10 feet. It's just a straight, narrow, picture-perfect run, like a bullet, just rocketing down the track. He had all that breakage in Fairfield, Illinois. So this tractor stood straight up on its end and came crashing down, had a lot of work to do when he got home. I should have been more ready for what happened when I stood my tractor up and bent the frame up. I, I think that I could have done a better job, and, that, and the next time I may do a better job. But anyway, we had it all broken up, and... <clears throat> Like I say, at 70, 
I don't work all night anymore, and I work, I repaired my tractor. I had to take it completely apart and cut it in two and put a new half of frame under it, and I put it back together at my own pace. I didn't know I was going to go there and be in a pull off the first day and win the second day. I didn't know. I didn't know I would do that good. But I knew I knew it was going to work pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, it's not his first rodeo, safe to say. All right, Wheeling, Missouri is the final pull, and that's coming up next. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. And the final pull of the 2010 season was Wheatland, Missouri. And here's a look at the points coming into that final pull. Just a six point lead for Bill Leishner. Might not be the time to make a big change, but a big change he made. We went to the pull at Indy and broke the throttle bracket and finished back. Then we went out to Hamburg and the track didn't take as much power and weight as normal and our tires didn't hook up at all. So then we were going to Wheatland and I didn't want to go out there without a chance to win, and it, it, was a, it was a shot in the dark, but, you know, Chad Mayhill does a good job cutting tires, and I talked to him, so we put the new tires on and went with it. It was a chance I needed to take. I figured Bunnage was on his game, and we weren't, so we had to change some. Bunnage didn't need to change anything. He was doing good. So there you go, and uh, and the run for the championship was on. LD Nation, one of the players inside of the field, would come out here and try to steal the win. He had slowly and steadily been bringing the Speco Indian Outlaw machine along. As the season wore on, you saw his finishes get more near the top. LD Nation would eventually end up in third place in the points for the season. And next up would be Blake Stewart. We saw him, of course, at Hamburg, New York, the 18-year-old, but he wasn't the only one driving this tractor. He had to share duties with his brother. Dad told us at the beginning of this year that we just have to work it out. Either he pulled at this place, and I pulled at the next place, so I sort of worked it out around school to where when, I have, when I'm out of school, I can go and I can run it, and then maybe the next week, I'll run it again, or maybe Mike will run it. We just sort of have to work it out. And work it out they did, and I'll tell you, he did a great job here at 326.71 and made the pull-off and eventually finished third in the pull-off. So a great job for the young man. That's just a tribute to him there. His only fourth or fifth time in the seat with these veterans that have been doing it for some 30 years. Now, a driver we don't usually see in the double stuff machine. We've got Brent Long doing the driving for the Roberts pulling team. And you know, he's kind of an innovator in this category in this double stuff machine composed of two of those DT 466 motors like you see in the unlimited super stock category. He's put two of those bad boys on here for the double stuff as the innovator and the guy that's kind of the, the force behind the technology in these motors. He's the one that takes it down the track for one of its first passes. And a solid effort there at 307.90. Yeah, those things produce upwards of 4,000 horsepower apiece, so he should be right there in the hunt. Wayne Bunnage was out next, and this, of course, was for the championship. And you, know, you want to talk about pressure here, because he knows that he's got to win and that other people have to get in between his run and Bill Leishner's run, four people to be exact, so that they can tie or take the championship win here. And it's one of those deals where you can't worry about anybody else. You just have to go out there and do the best you can possibly do. This is the guy he was in the hunt with. Wayne Bunnage went 347.84 to make the pull off. And of course, you watch the dirt slinger here from Rockstar, Bill Leishner goes 355.60 and clinches the championship. At that point, once he made the pull off, there wasn't enough tractors in that pull off to give Bunnage a shot at the championship. You think about a tire change. You think, well, it can't be that crucial. Well, it is. That's a huge change out there. If these tires would have bit too hard on Bill Leishner, he would have done nothing but blow off the tires and sat there and spin and wouldn't have put up that big distance out there. So, you know, he makes it sound like it's a minute change, but it's a major change, and it really paid off for him. LD Nation again after reconfiguring the four automotive style power plants and did a really good job at Hamburg, New York. Came back out here and again put up some good numbers. Not near the numbers Bunnage 
or Leister put up, but still a solid effort for a good fifth place at 319 and 12. I don't really know that you can call him a dark horse in the category for the 2011 season, but I think that you have to say the vehicle is a dark horse here. After making all these changes and, you know, coming on strong at the end of the season, you have to figure out that after two years of running those reciprocating motors, they finally figured out what it takes to get it down the track and to put it in the heat of battle. This is Sean Swearingen. We saw him as well at Hamburg, New York, when he came out there and really rocked the class and stole a win. He was hoping to do the same thing here. He did make the pull-off, but he didn't pick up the win. Well, you know he's always going to show up well in his home state of Missouri, and you see losing parts once again and still a valiant effort here. He makes the pull-off, ends up fourth, even with dropping all those parts on the ground. And we take a look at Bill Leishner here one more time. Bill Leishner in the pull-off. This is how you close out the season. You're in the hunt with a championship. He dipped down a little bit with momentum, but right back here at the final event, knew the championship was on the line and did what champions are made of. He won the event and he won the championship. Well, it doesn't get any better. I mean, come here and win this. Rockstar energy drink. Rockstar. What do you think? Just push this, gave us new levels this year. Just great. Special cut tires we had on there, you know, from Chad Mayhill from Hoosier Tire. Got to thank Heritage Seeds, you know, and Fast Sprayers for helping us get here. But, you know, Rockstar, Rockstar. That's, that's what's got us here. That's our major sponsor. That's great. And all these helpers. You know, Crash, I can't do this, you know. And my daughter-in-law at home helping get stuff. Jed. He films and does stuff. My son Shannon drives the other tractor. You know, I'm just lucky enough to set the seat and pay the bills. But it takes all of us. It, it's just a well-knit group and operation. There's guys at home that don't come. I just got to thank everybody at home and those sassy engines and Brian Knox. I mean, he's just fantastic to work with. We switched. We got four Knox motors on there. They're building a lot of power. It's just wonderful this year. I mean, we had three mulligans in there, went to the Indy Super Bowl, throttle rocket broke, tires didn't work at Hamburg. Chad Mayhill cut us some tires. These guys went to work, we come out here and win them both. What can I say? I love it. Rockstar energy drink. Oh yeah, of course, an elated champion once again. When we come back, we'll have more, but this time on the 2011 season. This telecast is brought to you by General Tire. Unleash the Fury. K&N, the world's best air filter. And by Team Lucas, taking your company's marketing to the finish line. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Lucas Oil Products. Made in America, sold to the world. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour where we're covering the 2010 season in review. But time now to talk about 2011. And what does a champ do as soon as he wins the championship on his way home? He thinks about next year. Oh, we're thinking pulling. We're just so happy we had such a good finish to the season. I mean, we went into the pull at Wheatland, could have lost it, could have lost the championship. We not only won the championship, we won the pull. That's a pretty good feeling. Go out there with new tires try something new, it works real well, the tire's hooked up, so we're all we're all hyped up the next day. We're just happy we had Rockstar on board, we're happy we won the championship, we won the pull, no, we're thinking about pulling. When we come back from Wheatland, we was like, you know, we was kind of down to dumps because we didn't win the points or nothing, but we was like, well, we might not run the points this year and whatever, but after we went through some of the winter and the harvest and stuff, and we was like, uh, there ain't no doubt, we're, we're gonna try it again. Then you gotta think about your other jobs and what else you have to do. You also gotta get the tractor winterized, get fuel pumps with oil in them so they don't rust up. Maintenance and when you're gonna fix it now for next season or you're gonna wait till later and get in competition with everybody else that needs crankshafts and parts. So we took the motors out and got them out to Sassy Engine so they could work on them and be done for the farm show is what we tried to do. We went out and bought four brand new motors. Ken and Vinny just completely went through them and. We're thinking about new superchargers and with the, all the motors fresh now for the beginning of the season, we know we're good. And we've actually, we've got seven motors now, so we've got plenty of spares to keep us going. We're pretty much ready for this start of the season. Uh, mainly the, the six cylinder International Brent Long. We took it out and we freshened up the whole thing. We put new pistons, liners, and just reworked the whole motor and went through the turbos. And, New clutch and ready to go again. Brian's been back there tuning. Everything's fresh. The tractor's probably better 
for this next season that's ever been. Better by being, it's got new pistons and sleeves. There's no slop in there. We got a lot of tuning we can do on the fuel system. We got a few tricks there. We put aluminum clutch cans. We're gonna build some new fenders. We're gonna lighten the tractor up so we have movable weight and we can compete better. Well, when you ask the Bunnages, what do you got to do to win a championship? There's no doubt they learned the answer in 2010. You got to stay consistent. You got to take and know your tractor. You got to make sure everything's right. You can't you can't just second guess your well zip fuel line titers. It's, I've done had them problems. You know, it's it's like the Gremlins we had this year. You take and just you just got to go through everything, and you really stay on top of stuff. And that's the reason why it helps to have maybe me and my brother both together. It's like, well, if he don't think of it, I do, you know? And you can look at our team, the way we run, and I think it helps us. I mean, Bill, I mean, Leicester's got a lot of help, and that's good, and we don't have as much help, but it's like, we know what we're doing more, I think, because it's just us two. Well, and the Bunnages will have to look out for other contenders like Stan Shelton in his shell shocked who had mechanical breakage last year and sat out part of the season. We lost experience is what really bothers me as much as anything. We're going to be a, a rookie again in the modified class. Uh, we're going to have our equipment ready. Uh, Tim Ingram is building us a new chassis, uh, chrome model chassis, roll cage and frame. And, and uh, we are changing our motor configuration. So our other motor configuration didn't give us as much movable weight. Uh, as we had it placed as this one will. So we'll have more movable weight, which can be a hindrance sometime. We may not know what to do with that weight also, but uh, it'll give us a lot of variables to run the tractor on different conditions, depending on what the track is. So we're excited about that. And Larry Roberts, who is passionate about tractor pulling, all of a sudden found himself in the super mod class, but it's okay. He enjoyed that as well. I was like that class too. I got interested in those turbines, found some online, bought them. One thing led to another, and somehow we ended up with three of them. I eventually want to build me a three or four engine modified, too. That's on my list to do next. Just wait till my wife gives me the okay, which will probably be never. I'll just have to sneak it in somewhere. But lots of guys are in the quest for a championship, and it's all about changes and trying to achieve the most amazing machine you can with lots and lots of power. Well, I tried to make more power. That's what you're supposed to do as, as an engine builder. But I tried to build a lighter tractor. But I drove funny cars, and I just love watching that old motor twist and work around. And I just felt right or wrong, whether it's a good tractor or it isn't. I want to say my four engines out there just twisting and working, and, and they're all going the same direction. And I just, to me, that's how the thing should be. I'm doing this because I like to do it, and I'm having fun. And, you know, when you're 70, you got to do what you can do to have fun. Well, Bill Leishner is a true champion, and he loves the chase of competition. And competition he will get in 2011. And the competition's getting tough. I mean, it, it was close. It was close the last two years. So the good competition takes a little away from the fact we won. We're just lucky enough the ones ended on top. And those guys are getting better, and it'll be tougher this next year than it's ever been. Bunnages are tough, Ken Vinny's building a new tractor. Anybody in our class could win. Scott Tedder's gonna be back. We're gonna be better, but so is everybody else. Well, the chase for the championship will be tough as it always is. And of course, Bill alluding to the fact that there's more players that have a shot at winning that championship. They're coming into the season prepared. They have the equipment. They know what it takes for travel, which is expensive. And of course, grueling as well. It's a lot of time that wears people down, but it's about that consistency that you spoke of earlier that really gets you to that championship level. Well, and it's all gonna play a key role here in the off season. It's how good of a machine that you can put together. You know, Bill Leishner alluded to the fact that his sassy engines were amazing all year long and they didn't have a lot of problems with them. And you saw how um, chassis problems really affected Ken Beanie and cut his season short. The same thing happened to Stan Shelton. If they can keep their parts from wearing away, that's going to be the key for these guys to keep up with this grueling schedule because that's what it is. The definition of good luck when preparation meets opportunity. And that's what those guys are hoping they'll have in 2011 when they chase that championship. We'll bring you all the action right here, so make sure you stay tuned in. It's been a pleasure to bring you the 2010 season in review, the Super Mods of the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. 
This telecast has been produced by Lucas Oil Studios. For Leslie Mears, I'm Ken Staff. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to get started for 2011. We'll see you then.